Okay, so this is my response to the tag set by Andy Outdoors. The tag being to produce something bushcraft. So I could do nettle string, I could simply light a fire, make a bow drill, or make a spoon. But what I'm going to do is tan a skin. To tan a skin I could, off the top of my head, use two methods. One is the brain or egg tanning method. I've never used that before. Another is the bark tanning method. And that's the method I'm going to use. I've used a similar method before with some limited success. So this time I'm going to try something slightly different and we'll see how we get on. The skin I've got is the skin of a squirrel which I got approximately a year ago and since that time it's been in salt. So I'm hoping uh, that that will be possible, that it will still be viable. I think it will because it's been kept dry. So I'm going to use tannin from the oak and you'll see that how I get that as we progress. Well that's the challenge and that's what I'm going to do. So let's crack on and get it done. Right, I was collecting oak bark for my tannin. I did think on collecting the leaves as well of the oak tree for the tannin. I know that acorns are quite bitter and I have been collecting a few acorns for other reasons. But underneath this oak tree, which I'm stood underneath, it's a bit dark still because it's only it's not even seven in the morning yet. But uh, there are a lot of malformed acorns. That one here. You see the base of it and then it's gone all like scaly. But they're very sticky. And I've actually tasted one and they are extremely bitter, far more bitter than a normal acorn. So I'm thinking that bitterness is tannin. So I'm collecting a few of these, there are lots of them. Not under every tree, but under this tree there is. And they're making my hands sticky as well. So I'm going to try these to extract the tannin from these. And see if that makes it half decent tanning. I think it probably will, I could be wrong but plenty of them anyway. Everything has some use. There's, a, there's your standard acorn there. And if I break that open there'll be a, a nut inside with a skin on it which has a lot of tanning in it. The acorn itself has a lot of tanning in it but not as much as these other things. So I'll get them and we'll see if we can't process them. Right, what I'm doing here is I'm just smashing up all those deformed acorns. Then I'm going to put them into a water solution which I'm warming up. And uh, we're going to leach the tannin out of them. Hopefully. So I'm just beating them up a bit first. But just be aware that uh, we're obviously trying to get tannin out which is an acid. And acid and high carbon steels don't mix too well. 
it'll rust any high carbon steel so if you've got a high carbon bushcraft knife and you start using it to cut these things up or you're using a, a steel, normal steel cooking vessel to get the tanning out you're going to ruin them uh, I'm obviously using a high carbon steel axe here I'm just hitting it on the end I'm, 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 it's not a throwaway axe it's an axe I've made myself I've put this handle on this head although it, it, it was a broken axe handle which I put on, on the head uh, but this is a use and abuse tool so I'm not too worried about a little tiny bit of rusting uh, you'll see there it's got rust on it from being out in the recent rains There is a little parasite in these and it's just like the you get in the in the oak apple. See if I can get another one. There's one there. So in that little cocoony thing is a little parasite. So that's what's causing the deformation is that little parasite I would have thought it tasted of tannin but it doesn't Let's see if we can get another one there it is it's in that little um, shield there so it must be pupating in there ready to come out as a little flying insect or something when I've taken them out of the oak apple and eaten them they've been a bit bigger than that and they've tasted very much of tannin these don't taste of tanning, so I'm a bit concerned about that. Never mind, if it doesn't work, I have got some I have got some bark. I mean we'll tell if it works when we've simmered it down and we get the brown liquid. We'll give the brown liquid a taste and it should taste bitter, very bitter. If it doesn't we know we've not got a good mix. Anyway, we've got quite a lot there and I've already got some in. Don't want that in there. So I'm just putting it into the zebra billy can. I'll find a stick to give it a stair with. It is going the right colour. I don't want it to get too hot because I don't want it to risk destroying the acid. If I dip the stick in there and taste it, it is starting to taste a little bit acidic. Not massively acidic but a little bit acidic or astringent or whatever the term is but uh, 
So I think we're going in the right direction, so I think we might be onto something here. So we'll get a little bit more chopped up uh, because I want a fairly strong solution. I'll put the top on so we're not getting ash in because ash is actually alkaline. Right, well this is the, um, the juice we've made. So I'm just going to filter it into this jug. And I reckon, I reckon I'll get a bit more tanning out of there if I put some more water in and warm it again. Uh, I'm not quite ready yet for the skin because I haven't yet even taken the um, the salt and scraped it. So for the minute, I'm just going to store this. Now I have, I've got my fingers black now, but I have tasted this. And it does taste suitably acidic. You can almost feel it tanning the inside of your mouth. So I think we've got the right stuff there. Now I don't know how well it'll keep, uh, but I won't be long before I'm ready. But I am going to warm this up one more time and get a bit more out of it. I'll have to do that first thing tomorrow. But for now I'm on, you know, there's other life things like the washing up. Right, so that's our... There's probably actually enough in there just for the one squirrel skin. Hey. Drop that. Drop that, you gormless nipper. Drop it. Fetch that here. Fetch it here. You want that round your backside? Eh? No. Fetch it here. No. Drop it. Drop. Good dog. Good dog. That'll do. That'll do. No. That'll do. Leave it there. And as I say, I've had the skin, the squirrel skin, and this is the squirrel skin. I've had it for a very long time, perhaps as long as a year. It's covered in salt. So I'm just hoping it's kept. Uh, I've got it pinned to some cardboard. So I'm gonna scrape the salt off this, get the skin out, 
and then I'm assuming it's such a long time ago I'm assuming it's going to need some scraping so I'm going to get on with that now okay so underneath the skin we've got moth damage or something moths have been under it so they've eaten away the hair not all of it but certainly some of it so I pinned it to the board and I hadn't put salt underneath it so there we go there's lesson one Alright, let's get this out of the way. So, I, I can see that there are <coughs> parts with little bits of membrane on. I'll just move you in a little bit closer. Well, apart from the little bit of damage from the moths, it's, it is in reasonable condition and uh, it is quite crispy I've got no experience of how hard to scrape it I don't want to scrape it too hard because although this is not going to turn out to be a very good hide because of the damage on the other side uh, I don't want to waste it in terms of practice and learning some thick bits here very easy to work with though it being so dry and so flat I think it's so flat because uh, it shrinks when it dries out and those pins have held it held the edges so it's it's pulled quite tight a bit like a drum skin To be honest this is not the first time I've tanned a skin I've tried it before when we've been in the field and I've had a, another squirrel and I, I did that at the, I did that with tea bags though I used tea bags well you've got to use Yorkshire tea bags because they're the only ones strong enough of course buy Yorkshire tea bags, Yorkshire tea, because you get about four cups of tea out of one tea bag. Oh we do, we have it fairly weak. Right, so this is just a mild soap solution and I'm just going to give it a bit of a wash off in there and get your nostrils out of it. Right, so that's just a quick wash in a mild soapy solution I'll take it rinse it off 
then we'll add the tannin and we'll let it uh, let it sit for a few days or not sit I'll I'll keep agitating it every every now and again so I'll, uh, I'll rinse it all off now I'm going to add the tannin And now I'm just going to leave it in there. I'm at work for three days before I'm off. Um, I don't know whether three days is going to be too long. We'll see anyway. So that's going to float to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few bits of brick on them from my flint collection this is all flint so I'm just going to use I'm just going to use two bits just to hold it down and uh, periodically I'll just move them bricks, move it about a bit and just monitor progress not that I really know what I'm looking for but uh, we'll see Right, well it's approximately 72 hours later, a bit longer than that actually. Uh, I've been at work for three days, I'm off again now, so that's how long it's been in the tanning. So I'm ready to take it out, but when I do take it out, it'll be a fairly long process to get it softened up and dry so to aid me to do that in the softening process you need to stress the leather to break the collagen bonds to make it much more supple and I've seen people using wires and stakes to do that so I can't really effectively rig up a wire here well I could but I don't think it's going to be any better really than this piece of wood I've knocked up and I'm just going to rake it across the top of this wood which I've it's still got sharpish corners on it but I've just taken the edge off it with a with a coarse file and I'm just going to clamp this to the workbench with these two G clamps. So when we, after I've done that, and when I have got it dry, I've got uh, I've got some of my own beeswax here, which I'm going to warm up with some olive oil, and the final process will be to rub a bit of that in. So this is the skin then, in here, and it's been in here as I say for a little over 72 hours two pieces of flint. I haven't been <clears throat> agitating it as much as I would have liked to have done and also as well um, if I'd have wanted the process to go a bit faster it could have done with been a little bit warmer because the temperature's dropping now and there's no real heat on in here but it has gone a brown colour So 
So I'm going to take take it out, and I've got a just wring as much as I can out of it first. And we'll set that aside. Whether that is will keep for any length of time, I don't know. Perhaps we'll see. So I've just got some water that is mildly warm. And I've got just a few drops of washing up liquid in it. So I'm going to put that in there. Seventy-two hours, and so far at least, it's still kept its hair on, which I was a bit worried about because I don't really know. I know that keep uh, cow hides in for for weeks, if not months, but the, not aiming to keep the keep the hair on, and they're of course much, much, much thicker. So now, what my aim is is just to work it now until it's dry and to do that as I've said I'm gonna bolt this up So that's not going anywhere now and I can just lightly stress that out over there and I've also got sharp corners there as well and I, oh, I am making a It is all experimental. We'll see what worked and what didn't work and what needs improving. Uh, th at this stage you can't tell how supple it is because it's it's wet so it's naturally um, mobile but as it dries unless I keep moving it it's going to dry uh, very hard so this is going to take now a few hours of doing this until it gets dry and I can take a bit of moisture off the fair side of it And what I might do is I might <clears throat> just let it air dry a little bit now while I'm going and processing this beeswax and um, olive oil down just to make a, a creamy uh, sort of oil that will soak in. So I'll, I'll get on with that now, let's just let that air dry just a little bit and I'll I'll do, I don't need all that wax, I only need half this wax. In fact I don't even need half of it, I'm just going to put a bit in there. So there's the little pot of olive oil and beeswax sitting on top of the stove along with the kettle. Of course you don't leave things like that unattended. Right, so I don't really like to say this, but it's turned out to be another success. The skin is almost dry now, 
and it's supple and I'm just rubbing into it some of the mixture I made from the olive oil and the beeswax but I have to say I've, I haven't put enough olive oil in it it's a bit hard so I might have to redo it but uh, I've just put a bit of more olive oil in the top but I've got to warm it up to get it to soften it so <clears throat> I'm just putting a bit of that in to moisten the skin and help preserve it but it is that I've put a bit in the bottom the top is as it as I finished it and it's still it's it's fairly supple but uh, to be honest I have tanned two skins previously and I've got those two skins here but I didn't use this method I used tea bags um, so this is the first time I've used tanning that I've collected and processed myself and these skins are a bit a bit I think you can hear that they're a bit harder uh, perhaps I can loosen them up a bit because I didn't have the advantage of the of the post to to run them over but I still should be able to soften those up in fact that has softened that up already So that's a total of three skins I've got now, so I shall be keeping my eyes out for more roadkill and I know what to do with them now. So before we know it we'll have either a jacket for the dog or a cover for my pack frame or something anyway. But that concludes the tag, uh, it just remains for me to tag two people if I don't like tagging people because I don't like putting people under pressure. But the, the only two I can think of that come to, well no, there is a third one, fourth one even, but the two that spring immediately to mind are, it, should they wish to do it. Bushcraft and fun, they're usually doing something bushcrafty anyway. And uh, X-Ray Zulu. And the original tag was just to go out and do something which is bushcraft or make something bushcraft. I mean that could be some spruce tea or to build a bushcraft style fire or to make some string from nettles or make a plaster from birch polypore or just you know it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, so that concludes this video then. Uh, I'll have to work on some failures because it's uh, I mean I obviously there's a lot of information on the internet and if you're doing something you can research it beforehand so there's a fair chance that it is going to be successful but you never really know until you try do you and it's good trying and uh, I wouldn't have been disappointed if it had failed I'd have just try and figure out why it failed uh, it's, uh, it seems to have succeeded again <laughs> I'll have to do I'll have to do something a bit more complex anyway uh, I'm rambling on now so I'll catch you all in a week or so and I do appreciate you watching I do appreciate the comments and uh, who knows what's going to turn up next I have got things planned uh, this wasn't planned so this has sort of taken precedent over another project which is dragging on I won't m mention what it is because to mention what it is I might not even get it done might I I might end up doing something different so that's that then so I'll catch you in a week or so